Today we're going to be talking about a pretty important topic in America, immigration. It is a very sensitive, sensitive topic. It makes people angry on both sides. The people who, the existing people who have been here for a while, the new people who are coming. It's very, 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 very hot topic. It's very um, controversial topic. We're going to try to keep this very scientific. We're going to try to keep it only on the facts. We're not going to get emotional. See, that's the problem with immigration. Everybody gets emotional about it because you got families involved and you got culture. You have an existing culture. You have new cultures. You have families. You have children. There's so many emotional topics, emotional levels on that. We have to stay away from the emotional levels. I want to figure out well, who's 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 gaining the most from the mass immigration. Um, who's gaining the most? Who's in control of it? I'll give you some hints on who's who's in control of the mass immigration, not only in America but the mass immigration in Europe. There are certain people in control of it. I mean, total control. Remember who your masters are. Very simple to find out who your masters are. It's simply the people that you're not allowed to talk about. You're allowed to talk about Obama. You can say all the bad things about Obama you want. You can say all the bad things you want about Republicans or Democrats or anybody. Pretty much anybody. But there are certain groups of people in, in this world that you're not allowed to talk bad about. Those are your masters. Once we establish that, then we can go on to the immigration problem. And make no mistake about it, the Supreme Court is a shill for the New World Order. The Supreme Court, a small group of very weak, weak old people. I mean, they are so weak. I mean, look at the neck on this guy. The, the cartoons actually tell you the truth. The Supreme Court are very weak old people, controlled shills. They do exactly what the New World Order tells them. And of course, cartoons tell you the truth. Look at the the enforcer, the man with a gun. He's strong, he's tough, but he's got no brains. He just listens to the weak guy with the big brain. The system is broke. Sometimes cartoons tell you, can explain it better than any of my words can. The system is broke. Now, of course, we're, but we're going to try to stay on topic here. Immigration. Now, many of the things I'm talking about, that many of the things I'm going to talk about today are not my ideas. Uh, these are the ideas of people like um, Lou Rockwell, Murray Rothbard. You're probably familiar with these names. These are big names in the uh, libertarian movement. Again, um, some of the ideas that I'm going to be sharing with you today about immigration are the ideas of Lou Rockwell and um, Murray Rothbard. And of course, I'm going to be adding my own words to this story, but I just want to make it clear, these ideas, are I did not make these ideas up. I'm just sharing these ideas with you. I'm spreading the word, if you will. Now, we've already been through that the Supreme Court is evil. The Supreme Court is not for the Americans. We've been through that. But let's go on to immigration. The problem with immigration is there's a lot of people out there who believe in open border policy. And of course, the open border policy has problems. If you believe in individual private property. See, that's the situation. Where I, so what I'm going to be talking about when I'm dealing with immigration is I'm going to be dealing with individual private property. And that's where we're going to... Now, the problem is with our immigration system, okay, it's based on like a fascist system. And one of the big problems is uh, where large fascist corporations bring in outsiders and pay them low wages and then expect the taxpayer to pay for their snap card, their food stamps, their cell phone, their health care, and their assisted housing or whatever welfare they get because they're not getting paid much. This is a, a fascist, evil system. It's based on thievery. It's fraud on the taxpayer. So this system of uh, 
our immigration policies are broke on so, so many levels. But that's just one example. But what I want to go into is an idea that Lou Rockwell is expanding on. He thinks that the correct way to proceed with the immigration would be to decentralize the decision-making on immigration to the lowest possible level. Let me kind of repeat that a little bit. Lou Rockwell thinks that the correct way to proceed on the immigration policies would be to decentralize the decision-making on immigration to the lowest possible level. Now, what does he mean by that? What's mean, what he means is that individual, if, if put it this way, there's too much land out there controlled by the government, and that's clouding the water. See, the government is in control of so much land. The government is in control of like 80 90% of the the land in Nevada alone most of some of the some of the the mass immigration is coming to places like Nevada, Arizona. And it's not a coincidence that, that the government owns most of that property. So that's what really clouds the water to immigration because uh immigration now is centralized in the government making all the decisions. And of course it's not the government that really makes the decision, it's the people who control the government. Who are the masters behind the government? Who's pulling who's pulling the strings of the government? Yes, I'll give you a few hints, but let's make one thing perfectly clear here. When a powerful entity or mostly a state or whoever's in power, when they let mass immigration happen, when they make uh, the mass movements of people, they put it in action, there's always a reason for that. And the reason that the people in power let the mass movements of new people come into an existing area, it's always one, one reason they do it. It's always to destroy the existing culture. Now, I'm going to repeat that. To be able to have mass immigration on a huge level, like what's coming into America or what's coming into Europe, you have to have the, the people in charge have to okay it. And the only reason why they okay it is because they're letting all these mass new outsiders in to destroy the existing culture. Always. Don't ever forget that. That's, that's the whole idea about mass immigration. It's to destroy the existing culture. Well, you say, okay, I'm rambling on. I just, I'm just talking. Do I, have any, do I have any examples to back it up? Do I have any facts? Well, let's go over a few of the facts. How about, let's go back into history. How about Rome? How about when Rome was overrun with the outsiders, the Vikings, the Goths, the other hoodlums, the Germans, the, who came in to Rome? Many, many people will tell you that was the downfall of Rome. When the outsiders came into Rome and they destroyed the Roman culture, it was the end of the Roman way of life. It was the end of Rome, period. Okay, people bring up, how about uh, the Soviet Union? When Stalin moved uh, mass amounts of Russians into Estonia. Yeah, when Stalin moved... uh, all the Russians into Estonia. Why did he do that? He did it to destroy the existing culture, to prop up the the uh, Soviet Union's agenda. Okay, let's go into some. How about when England? How about when England moved millions of Anglo's into the Native American land? It was for one reason only. It was the the Anglo's were moved in to destroy the Native American culture. So how about now in the New World Order? So we know who's in control. You, you, you know who your masters are because of the people you're not allowed to talk about. We'll call them the New World Order, the money changers. We'll use all kind of terms. We, can, we have many, many names for them. But how about now they're moving millions of Arabs into Europe? Why? One reason only, to destroy the European culture. So I've given you plenty of examples of mass immigration and how it destroys the existing culture. I don't want to ramble on there. I don't want to beat a dead horse. I don't want to beat a dead horse. If you haven't got that, if you don't understand that mass immigration can destroy the existing culture, well, you just need to go watch the Kardashians or something. You're not going to be able to understand a word I say. 
Okay, so let's go on to some... Well, I said we were going to go into the how we're going to deal with immigration. Well, like Lou, Lou Rockwell brings up some good ideas. We need to decentralize. We need to get the, the decision-making process out of the government. And we need to get the decision-making back into the individual private property owners. And we're going to use an example of that. How about in a, a utopian a utopian example, a utopian uh, situation where the government is in control of no land at all? The government's just doing its job of security, uh, making people drive safely on the road, protecting the borders. And in that situation, let's talk about where the, the government doesn't control any land. Private owners do. Let's go there. So if all the land in the world was privately owned by private individuals, there would be no immigration problem. It, it just would be none. And I'm going to go into why I, I believe that. And so... As Lou Rockwell said, he thinks that you should uh, decentralize, decentralize the decision making on immigration, and what that would do is it would make you get down to the pos pos lowest possible level. That would be each individual making their own decisions, and if you do that on millions and millions of separate cases and millions and millions of different decisions, the invisible hand would work it out all perfectly. For example, let's go to the freedom of speech. As you know, you cannot you you think we we think we have the freedom of speech, but you cannot go into a church and start screaming the whole time the church program is going on. They're going to take take you out. And uh so there you have to understand that freedom of the open borders and the free the free movement of people is almost like the freedom of speech. Like so if you think about private property rights, you know, I would like to be able to just walk onto Harry Reid's property and just start telling him and screaming at him saying, hey, why are you stealing all the Americans' money? And just give him a piece of my mind. I would like to just be able to do that. But Harry Reid has private property. I have to respect his private property. So I don't have the freedom of speech to just go onto Harry Reid's property and just start screaming at him and telling him how I feel, calling him a thief and everything, because I have to respect his property. I can scream as much as I want right here. I can, but I cannot go into Harry Reid's property and do that. I can't, I cannot go into Bill Gates' property. I just could not just invite myself onto Bill Gates' property and start doing as I please. See, so there are limits to the freedom of speech and there's limits of freedom, freedom of movements. And that's why it's so important, I believe, that we get immigration out of of the hand of the government. I agree with uh, Lou Rockwell that the government is making all the bad, making all the wrong decisions with immigration. They're not capable. The government's not capable of making the right decisions on immigration, but it would be a lot easier if, ev if on an individual basis, on individual private property rights, then there would be no immigration problem because both sides would have to agree to it. Say, take like Switzerland. At one time, Switzerland had some pretty good rules, I guess, where, you know, if they brought in outsiders, that the people who uh, bring the outsiders in had to pay their way. And, uh, of course, that's all gone now. Switzerland is now overrun by the European Union. But to make, just make it simple here, our system... Which, where we give out free food for the SNAP card, we give out free welfare, we give out free housing, we give out free cell phones. That system does not work when you have millions and millions of outsiders coming in just for these welfare programs. So the system's broke. That's why I want to, that's the main point here. We can all agree on one thing the system is broke for sure. And our founding fathers, our founding fathers would definitely say, what in God name have you done but we always try to focus on solutions so we know the government is in no position to make the right decisions on immigration they have failed miserably so i believe that lou rockwell is on to something that we've got to get that the, we've got to get the property out of the federal government's hand we got to take the 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 85 percent of the land in nevada 
that the government owns. You're looking at land right here. This land that you're looking at right now is all owned by the government. We've got to get this land out of the government's hands into the private ownership. We've got to get decision-making on immigration. We've got to get that back in the hands of the people, individual private property owners. See, that's another thing. You cannot have people who are living in apartments on welfare, getting SNAP cards. You cannot have them voting themselves free food, free housing. See, that's where it doesn't work. We need individual private property owners who are making decisions because they, are, they own the property. We don't need people to come, come in and start voting, them for, voting themselves free food, free housing, free this, free that. I mean, it, you see, the system doesn't work. Now, I think I've rambled on a little bit too long here, but I just wanted to spread the word that I believe Lou Rockwell is, is on to something, that open borders doesn't work. Open borders is not the solution. The, we have to get the immigration uh, down to uh, the lowest possible level. Like he said, we have to decentralize the decision-making on Im immigration to the lowest possible level. We've got to get the land out of the federal government's hand and into the private owner's. And once we start on that way, then we can start eliminating the free food, the free cell phones, the free health care, the free assisted housing, all the free stuff. We can stop it because it's just thievery. They're taking, they're taking from producers and giving it, giving it to non-producers. And like I said, it, the system is collapsing right around us. So stay tuned because uh, the, it's quickening. I believe the collapse is quickening. And if you want to help, if you really want to help, uh, be prepared. When this collapse happens, okay, I've, I've, you've got to be prepared with uh, food, ammunition. You've got to be pre prepared for the collapse. But also, you can also help us by going to the European tribes of North America and joining us so we have a group, a strong group of people who can take over after the collapse. Good luck.